everybody and happy technically day three of the reading rush. I am currently filming this at 2am so that's great. Um, as you can hear my Mac sounds like it's going to take off so that means I am rendering a video. I'm actually rendering the vlog from yesterday. The camera just hates these lights. It genuinely does hate them. Like I said in yesterday's vlog at the very end I am going to be starting Scott Pilgrim right now as my video is rendering uh, and uploading and stuff so I can watch it upload and then I might go to sleep I might actually stay up until 3 a.m so I can do the sprints day three and I've only really partook in one I have had work and just other things going on while the sprints have been being hosted I don't like the way this camera is with these lights so I'm gonna wrap this up but yeah it is currently 2 a.m and I'm rendering my video about to start my read for the challenge of reading a book based on a movie that I've already seen. I've already seen Scott Pilgrim, so I'm going to be reading this instead of uh, Percy Jackson, like I originally wanted to read, which is a really big letdown, I know, but there will be content coming around me reading that for the first time, so that's fine. Um, while my video is rendering, and also while I'm waiting for the next bouts of sprints to start, and I might stay up, I might not, I don't know how long this is going to take me, but we'll just have to wait and see. to day three of the reading rush officially because i did start this vlog really chaotically at like three but it is now currently 12 46 so it's quarter to one in the afternoon and i haven't spoken up or anything i've actually been awake for quite a while but i thought i would finally come on here and give you a little bit of an update so last night as you saw i did start uh volume one of scott pilgrim uh i did finish this last night actually i was very tired when i did it but i did manage to get to the end it ended right as the first like ex-boyfriend has been defeated of scott pilgrim basically if you don't know what scott pilgrim is about it's basically about this guy called scott pilgrim you guessed it who meets a girl called ramona and basically he has to in order to date her defeat all of her ex-boyfriends i think there's six or seven of them and so um he goes through all of them and defeats them in like major battles and stuff like that or are they all ex-boyfriends we'll never know but yeah i did uh finish this last night and i ended up giving it a three out of five stars one of the main reasons why i did end up giving scott pilgrim a three out of five stars and not anything um higher than that was just because i forgot how creepy scott pilgrim is uh the actual character of scott he is at the beginning he's dating a high school student called knives and he's like 23 and that is just kind of a little bit noncy really and i didn't like that at all i didn't forget that that happened i just didn't realize it was such a big deal until i was reading it and i was just like this ain't it this just ain't it but i do think it translates to the movie or the movie has translated it rather really well and i would be interested in buying the rest of the volumes because i can see myself really really enjoying them and also wanting to rewatch the movie as well i'm sorry the exposure is like so bad like i look very pale there we go that's better than like a ghost now um but yeah i really do like this i'm enjoying it i did only give it a three star just because it was quick and easy and i do like the story and i do like the film as well i just think that scott is a little bit of a creepy character and he kind of always has been i just didn't realize how much he creeped me out until now so technically i have now read three books and completed three challenges so i'll give you a little bit of like a reading mini wrap up right now i read shades of lovers in the first vlog of this like 
reading rush uh, and this was to read a book in a genre that I don't normally read from or want to read more from which was poetry. Next I finished Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany D. Jackson. This was for a book that takes place in a different continent than I live in and obviously Scott Pilgrim was my uh, book that's based on a movie I've already seen. So overall I'm feeling quite good. Three books down and three books into the reading rush. I have been in such a big reading slump uh, these last couple months since about March until now and reading this much has really made me feel like I can pick more books up when the reading rush has also ended as well. Last night I did post a picture of me cosplaying as Scythe Lucifer for yesterday's um, Instagram challenge and like I predicted I did not win unfortunately. The winners were really fucking cool. Someone cosplayed as Hey Arnold and it was absolutely insane like I loved it so much. I think today's Instagram challenge is to take a picture with your pet like a book and your pet. And I'm pretty sure that these are the same challenges as last year. Like I swear to God they are because I'm, I'm pretty sure we've had these three already. I'm pretty sure we had them last year. Unless I'm just not changing the Instagram challenges anymore and they're the same every single year, which is a little bit uh, of a waste if I'm being completely honest. So I do have a pet. I do have a cat. But unfortunately, um, I don't think he would want to sit and chill with me for me like long enough for me to be able to take a picture because he just doesn't like cameras not really he was in he was featured in yesterday's vlog but um he doesn't like cameras and he doesn't like posing for them the video clip was like 15 seconds long because he just does not sit still and i think that taking a picture with him will be absolutely impossible i also have some bookish mail which i'm gonna want to talk about so i will open me package i actually got this recommendation from emma books uh, and her book haul that she posted, was it a few days ago? And she convinced me instantly to buy this book and it is called The Falling In Love Montage by Sierra or Sierra? I probably think it's Sierra uh, Smith. It's basically about two girls, it's very sapphic. Um, one of them has like a simple plan for the summer where she just wants to have loads of fun and just have, I'm thinking like a casual relationship with somebody and she doesn't think that she's ever gonna find actual proper love and she'll always just be alone and going from person to person. Then a girl, I think her name's Ruby, comes along and she, um, our main character doesn't want a like full on relationship. She just wants to be like, you know, friends of benefits and then move on to the next person. But Ruby challenges her to spend the summer with her uh, and just her I think and like I'm, I'm guessing that they fall in love um, and it says at the end here but what happens when the falling in love montage ends and I am so fucking excited about this I was instantly hooked because of the title the falling in love montage it's like film related and I'm, I'm a film nerd as you probably know I think the purpose of this is that they kind of like recreate romantic moments over the summer and it's gay it's sapphic it's woman and woman love and you know the best part about this book is that it starts with the and I can read it for the reading rush. And to be honest, I am very tempted because I'm very excited for this. I actually might see if, if there's like an audio book or something because I'm really into this. I don't think it's very long. I think it has 383 pages. So it's about as long as, um, actually just as long as Let Me Hear a Rhyme. And I managed that in two days. So I'm thinking that I'm going to probably not double up on the two challenges with The Moon. I was going to read um, The Moon for two challenges. It's a poetry collection by Kay Toln. And it was for my obviously book that begins with that and also a book that I need to read outside of my house. I think I might just stick with this one being the book I read outside of my house. And and then have the falling in love montage as the book I read um, that begins with the. Just look at the cover. Those are two girls that I'm probably gonna fall in love with and they're gonna fall in love with each other and everything is gonna be perfect. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's everything I need to update you on. Me and my friend uh, are actually going out for food today, I believe, and drinks. And now that I am ahead with Scott Pilgrim, um, I can um, just chill for today. I'm not gonna not read, if that makes sense. Um, I do want to kind of read something even if it's just, I can't read the poetry collection because it's uh, outside of my house, unless I go outside and read, but it looks like it's about to rain. I also have to like get ready and do my makeup and have a bath and stuff, which would be perfect if I could get some audiobook listening in. While I'm here, I might as well just show you the books that I have left and we'll see if I have audiobooks for them. I have these two left, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to read either of them. I could if that has an audiobook. Should we check if it has an audiobook? It doesn't, or at least not on script anyway, so that's a no. This one is honestly a maybe. This this is The Wicked and the Divine, which is Read the First What You Touch, which I did on my TBR video. There, it's always linked down below if you want to go and view that. Gorgeous. 
gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous graphic novel. This is about like the gods and stuff. Um, on the back it says every 90 years, 12 gods return as young people. They are loved, they are hated in two years. They are all dead, it's happening now, it's happening again. And I'm very excited about this, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I also have two like full length books. Um, I have Rick by Alex Gina, which is a uh, middle grade book, a children's book. <gasps> it does! It's only three hours long. Maybe I'll read Rick then. Rick has an audiobook, which is really, really nice. Uh, I'm gonna press download on that. It's three hours and 27 minutes long, so I can probably read that in about uh, an hour and 40 minutes, maybe? This is my challenge for read seven books, which I might not need if I'm reading the Falling in Love montage, but I still really would like to read it. I wanna get as much read as I possibly can. And then the last one is When You Were Everything, which is the book that I picked to to match my birthstone. But I'm gonna see if this also has an audiobook as well. Oh no, it's currently, it does have an audiobook, but it's currently unavailable. But yeah, those are some of my reading plans for today and just plans in general. I've kind of just been chatting shit and like, really kind of figuring stuff out. It's easy to figure stuff out, like planning planning wise and what I'm going to do if I say them out loud. So I just kind of film and then I just cut out bits that annoy. I'm going to listen to the audiobook for Rick by Alex Gino um, and get ready to go out. I'm very excited. It should only take me about an hour and a half to get ready. So maybe I'll just read this and that will be over by the time I'm ready. And I'm very excited because Alex Gino is one of my favorites. Like honestly, I love them so much. <laughs> I don't know, four? Yeah, day four of the reading rush. I decided to combine day three and day four of my vlogs together just because yesterday I don't think I got enough, well I kind of did get enough footage for one vlog, but I think that it would be better if I was just to combine the little bit I'm gonna be vlogging today and the little bit I vlogged yesterday just to have one big vlog. But yeah, it is now day four and me and my friend went out yesterday for something to eat and some drink. Before we went out, I actually did manage to finish Rick by audiobook. I was getting ready, doing my hair and my makeup. It only took me like an hour and a half to finish and it was the sweetest little book I think I've probably ever read. I might have been a little bit like over generous with that. It's probably more like a four stars, um, but I loved it so much. I just couldn't give it anything less than a five stars because I loved it so much. It was such an easy read, obviously, because it is a children's book. I am in the LGBT plus community uh, and I'm bisexual, identified as a cis uh, bisexual woman. And from what I can see, the way that Alex Gino talks about bisexuality in this book is really, really good and really accurate to my experiences. There's also some asexual rep in here. Obviously I can't speak for the asexual rep, um, but Rick, the main character, is having thoughts about some stuff. I won't spoil it for you. I absolutely loved Rick's granddad, like his grandpa, and the fact that he goes to visit him on, was it the weekends or something? Um, and his sister goes to college and she always used to visit their granddad instead, but now that she's gone to, to uni, to college, he is lumped with the task of going to speak to their granddad. And I know the feeling of that, going to speak to your grandparents and spending like the, the weekend with them and not really wanting to because you just want to stay and, and be with your friends. It turns out that his granddad's actually really, really cool, interesting and has loads of life experiences and Rick really loves him and I loved him too. He gave the best advice to Rick and I feel like we all need Rick's granddad in our lives, to be honest. Alex Gino actually narrates this uh, audiobook as well for Rick and they put on loads of voices for all of the characters and stuff like that. And you could tell that they wrote this book specifically to be for children and be the characters are children as well. And it was just, some of the moments were really funny and they really tickled me because some stuff that kids just say and it's just really funny and off the cuff. It actually didn't trigger me in ways that I thought because Rick's best friend Jeff is a bully, but luckily I wasn't triggered. Um, I thought I might have been, but I, I wasn't. Alex Gino also wrote George, um, which is about a transgender uh, kid. Uh, who wants to play Charlotte in Charlotte's Web. Um, and this does follow on from George, sort of. It's in the same universe, like I was saying. I didn't know whether it was in the same universe or not, and I was like, we'll find out. It is, and Melissa is actually in this book. Um, and it's so nice to see her. And you kind of get to see what happens to Melissa after the elements of George end, and... Oh, it was so good. That's why I gave it five out of five stars. It was just so feel good, so informative as well. I saw some Goodreads reviews of, of this actually on Goodreads, obviously, and it says it's a little bit preachy, but we'll just ignore them idiots because they don't appreciate the fact that this is golden. And I think 
every child should read something like this. I am so glad that kids now have stuff like this because I didn't have stuff like this when I was when I was little. And I'm just so glad that this exists now because these are so important. They might just seem like silly little books, um, but they're not. They actually do change people's lives and I'm so glad that it exists for people and kids now. Not even just kids, but people in general. It just made me cry, okay? It was really, really good. <laughs> so now I have read uh, four books for the reading rush. Rick actually didn't complete any challenges, I don't think. It complete any challenges anyway, but I just wanted to read it, if I'm completely honest, because it's been on my radar for quite a long time, and I really enjoyed George, and I really enjoyed Rick as well. The next book I'm thinking of moving on to is the challenge of to match a book with your birthstone, and that is When You Were Everything by Ashley Woodfolk. Uh, obviously, this is absolutely gorgeous. It does not have an audiobook, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to read this physically, which is annoying because I wanted to clean my room and stuff, but I might try and get halfway through it today. It is only what time is it? It's only half past three. So I think I can get a decent amount of reading done before uh, I hop on to a Twitch stream, which I'm going to be doing with a few friends of mine. We're going to be playing something called Sketchful.io. Um, I'm hoping to get this vlog edited and uploaded before we do that. So this book has 385 pages. So all of the like full length young adult or adult novels that I'm reading are around the same like page count which is about 380 pages so i'm really really happy about that and i really hope that i can um get half of this read today and then half of this read tomorrow very excited for this one it's about two best friends who aren't friends anymore like they fall out and then they have to become back together because one of them becomes the other one's tutor or something like that either way they have to like look at their friendship what went wrong and maybe start to heal maybe even become friends again i love books about friendship i've said this so many times during these vlogs but i do love books about friendship and i'm very very excited for this one in particular because i think it's gorgeous i think it's absolutely stunning i haven't seen it Ooh, under the dust jacket look at that that is simply beautiful absolutely incredible but yeah those are my reading plans for the rest of the day just to start um when you were everything by ashley woodfolk for my birthstone um challenge i'm really excited to read it it looks really good Dropping this vlog to show you my bed sheets because they are fucking beautiful. Hello, guess what? I just, I, it's the next day um, and I didn't read anymore, I didn't vlog anymore, I didn't do anything else. I've literally got that much further into when you were everything. To be honest, I did sit down to read and I read for quite a while, but I just, I just kind of got bored. Like, it was just kind of boring me, um, and I didn't expect it to. I am mid-chapter right now. I am on page, like, 20 um, currently, and I just got bored, like, really quickly. I'm not sure why or what's wrong with me. I think it may be just because it's a book that is going to take a bit more time getting into, and I have to process things a lot more, and just the things I have been reading, and the fact that I'm in a reading slump, just make it so that this is taking a bit longer. So I think I'm going to stick with it, but I think I'm going to put it down for now and just kind of complete different challenges instead and then save that one for Sunday where I have the whole day to read and I'll just sit down and read that. Because I'm doing that, unfortunately, I don't think I will be able to get round to the Falling in Love montage, which is really sad, but I can just read it next week. That's absolutely fine. I might vlog that as well. Who even knows? So yeah, apart from When You Were Everything, I have two books left and I think the challenge I'm going to be completing is The Moon, which is the book for my uh, A, Read Outside of Your House, and B, if I'm not reading the Falling in Love montage, also the book that begins with the. Um, thinking of reading this today, but I will talk more about that in a bit because I'm going to be starting the next vlog now. But just thought I'd come on and give you a little bit of an update. Some stuff just happened yesterday and I really could not be bothered to read afterwards. All I wanted to do is stream and play sketchful with friends and stuff. I just don't have the energy or capacity to read or vlog or anything. Shit just happened and it almost ruined this for me. But no, I was doing so well. I still am doing so well. And 
not letting petty drama or people who have so many unresolved issues that are not my problem and never were my problem um, ruin this for me because I love reading, I love the reading rush and I'm not letting anything stop me from doing well. But yeah, this was my kind of like combined vlog between two days of the reading rush. I really hope that you enjoyed them. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, give my channel a subscribe as well and I'll see you next time. Bye!